psychological warfare is sometimes more powerful than even physical warfare. And, and their last statement there was a fox would be able to break down their wall of stones. They're playing this psychological game with the Jews. They're trying to get in under their skin. They're trying to ridicule them and mock them because when you're ridiculed and mocked, it can cripple you. In, in your God-sized dreams and the things that you've been called to and the things that you're trying to endeavor, because we've got this insatiable need of acceptance. Acceptance is not a teenage thing. It's an adult thing as well. It's not just a teenage thing. Peer pressure spawns out of our need for acceptance, and peer pressure determines oftentimes how we do our hair, the kind of clothes we wear, the kind of shoes that we buy. It determines if we'll smoke or drink or cuss or a whole bunch of things. Fitting in is, is a key to our lives, because honestly, why would anybody ever, for the first time, for no reason, pick up a cigarette or a drink? question is, who do you want to be accepted by? Nehemiah is mocked and he's ridiculed and he's trying to accomplish something really great for God and they mocked Jesus as well. You remember that back in Matthew 27, they put a sign over his head as a joke that said, this is Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. They insulted him. Even the elders mocked him. They spit on him. And there were these outside forces, outside forces that were getting in Jesus' face, and these outside forces were getting in Nehemiah's face, and these outside forces will also get in your face to mess you up. But sometimes the opposition isn't external, it's internal. It's our own thought life. Maybe it's this dangerous, self-defeatist attitude that we carry around, like Murphy's Law. Sometimes this mentality comes from our upbringing, sometimes it comes from our experience, sometimes it comes from uh, having our self-esteem crushed in some certain situation, but sometimes it's our own learned insecurities. Because we've, we've been taught when we were younger that there are basically two, maybe three, innate, inborn insecurities that we have, or fears that we have, or responses that we automatically have, and one's the fear of falling, and one is the fear of loud noises. The other one could be the fear of abandonment. But those three things are really about the only learned responses or, or um, fears or whatever. It depends on what website you read and what psychology you talk to. But basically, those are the only two or three that are just kind of inborn. They're there at the very beginning. The rest of it, for the most part, we learn or we experience. I don't know where I got the fear of claustrophobia, but I wish I could go back in time and try to fix that. Because I... I've told you about that CSI episode when he's buried in that, oh, oh, and it's not the red ants and stuff. If it was, oh, no, just let's just move on. That's just gross. As believers, we should be some of the most confident people on earth. Because who else has the God of the universe who's got our back and our front and our sides? There's no need to be fearful. There's no need for this, this Murphy's Law kind of mentality.